Welcome to Therapy Explained, where we explain, demystify, and destigmatize mental health and mental health treatment. My name is Denise Pleiner. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and your very own mental health cheerleader. In today's video, I'm going to be letting you know why you should be seeing your therapist, your new therapist, every week. But before we jump into the video, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already for more videos on all things mental health. Give it a thumbs up if at any point you find it useful or you feel like you learned something. So without further ado, let's start this conversation. Oftentimes we get that question, can I start seeing my new therapist every other week? And the answer to that is no. Now, before I get to the explanation of the reasons behind that, there's a few things that you need to know about the kind of therapist that I am and the kind of therapy that we do at my group practice. And keep in mind that this is, of course, just one perspective. There are many therapists out there who are more than happy to do therapy at every other week. But let me explain to you the reasoning behind the importance of seeing your new therapist on a weekly basis the context. So me and my practice, we are psychoanalytic and psychodynamic therapists. For that reason, we do long-term therapy. We're talking a year, two years worth of therapy. And that is because the type of work that we do requires that amount of time. Our ultimate goal for all of our patients, and regardless of why they come to us, is to help you learn how to heal your past wounds, develop new habits, and create true healing for yourself, finding tools that you can use, not just in the moment while you're in therapy, but even years after therapy. In order to do that, we really need to help you learn who you are, what your history is, and how that plays a role in how you interact with the world around you now. There is so much to learn and that takes time. We are a psychodynamic kind of therapy practice, which means that we draw from different modalities. So all the different types of therapies that are out there, we're curious about them, we try to learn about them as much as we can, and borrow from each of those therapies to help you best. But in order to figure out what that is, we need to get to know you, and we need to test out a few. What helps, what doesn't, we recommend a few things, so we try them together, leave what doesn't, and keep practicing what does. But again, that's what takes time because we are psychodynamic. What also makes it take time is that we are psychoanalytical. And that is the whole, you know, probably Freudian idea that you have of therapy where we ask, hmm, how do you feel about that? Where does that come from? Where did that start for you? And that's because what we're trying to get at is the origin of the wound. Where did that begin for you so that we can actually heal it? Where does it hurt and why? And then we can do that true long-term healing because you know what actually hurts and where it started, that you can trace it back on your own in the future and help it not be so overwhelming as you continue through move to, through life. Now, through that context, it's easier to understand why our recommendation is to start seeing your therapist weekly for at least the first six months. Now, that might seem like a really long time, but think about it more in terms of time. The time that you're actually sitting and talking to your therapist and working with your therapist in six months is about 24 hours. And again, you might still be thinking 24 hours, that's like a whole day, right? Um, that is 24 hours compared to 20 plus years of wounds, habits, patterns, behaviors, and history that you are carrying. So the 24 hours is just the beginning because again, what we're going for here is long-term healing. We don't do brief therapy in which we do just 10 sessions and then get you going because that's more of a band-aid. That's more of here's what you need right now. Let's get you back to baseline and get out, which is at times part of what we do we get you back to baseline, we get you to feel more stable, and then we do the deep work. But again, our point of doing the deep work is long-term healing. 
And with that context, let's talk about what we do with those 24 hours in therapy. We're building a strong foundation. So those recommended initial 24 hours are to help you build a strong foundation with your therapist. If you watched other videos in the past of mine, you are aware of how important it is for you to have a good relationship with your therapist. That makes the most difference in treatment. There are studies about this. That's the most important thing. Not the modality of the therapy, so it's not if it's CBT or psychoanalytical or if it's um, you know, TF CBT, whatever it is that you are doing, sure, of course, does inform the treatment and how you might do and how you might respond to it. But ultimately, the biggest difference is actually made by the relationship that you have with your therapist. And so that is key. And that's why it's so important. We want to build a good relationship with your therapist where you feel safe and seen. Now, the therapist the relationship is different than like a friendship or any other relationship that you have and so it works differently. So let's talk about what building that relationship looks like. The first three to four hours, so three to four weeks or your first month, is mostly assessment. Your therapist is getting to know three major things about you. Number one, your past. So we're looking at your history. Who did you grow up with? Where did you grow up? What was that like? How did that shape your view about yourself and others? We are learning all the wounds, all the past, all the history that you've experienced so that that can give us information about what's led you here. The second biggest piece of information that we're learning is your present. What's going on for you now? What brought you to therapy? What does your world look like? Who are the important people in your life right now? Why? what is the biggest source of stressor and why and how, um, what are some things that are coming up for you on the day to day that you might want to work on or look at. So all of that is your present. Are you currently working? Are you going to school? Where? All of that. We're learning you. We're learning about you. And the third biggest piece of information that we're learning is your future. What do you want your future to look like? What do you want for yourself? Do you know what you want for yourself? Do you know how to figure that out or how to get there if you know? And developing your treatment goals. And this is actually very specific to the practice and the work that we do at my group practice. The first three to four sessions are mostly concentrated on these facets, on that assessment. And then together, which is, I would like to say unique to my practice, is that we collaboratively create a treatment plan with you. And what that looks like is that in session, one of your therapy sessions is actually used to brainstorm your goals with your therapist. You get to decide what they are, and then you brainstorm and write down what you're going to do to get there. Now this isn't like here's step one, step one A, step one B, but more of what are some things that we wanna try? What are some directions? It's kind of looking at a map and saying, I'm here, I wanna go there. And then your therapist just goes, okay, we could go that way, we could go that way, we could go that way. Here's some sites that we can see on the way there. So it's, a, it, it's that planning, it's that vision, right? Creating that vision for where you wanna go and what you want your journey to look like generally. Now remember that we are a psychodynamic practice, so that means that we're probably going to be changing that route as we go. And I'll share a little bit more about what that looks like in the next section. And I know that I mentioned that the first three to four sessions or the three to four hours of those six months are gonna be focused on assessment and getting to know you. But remember that you're also present during these sessions. So you are getting to know you. You are, you are dedicating at the very beginning all these hours to looking back and reflecting on your past, on how things made you feel, on how things and events and experiences have shaped the way that you view the world and the way that you view yourself. So you are gaining so much knowledge about your past. You're starting to connect dots even from the beginning during this process. We also get you to reflect on your present and asking some questions that you probably haven't really asked yourself about your current life. And then of course, again, it's that future, right? That envisioning, that creating your journey for yourself that is a process for you as well. Because everything, everything that we do, everything that you will be doing in therapy is for you. And that is why the weekly sessions are so important. 
after those four hours or four sessions, we're really only left if you're only dedicating, right? If you're only thinking about it the first six months, that leaves us with 20 hours to implement the plan, to figure out what works, what doesn't, to figure out what are some barriers, how can we address them, changing things, adjusting things. And that's what the rest of those 20 sessions would be for. But here's why it's important for you to do it weekly. Building habits takes time. Habits, by definition, are behaviors that you engage in consistently over time. What we're trying to help you do is brainstorm and figure out tools, behaviors, interventions, patterns, new patterns that are going to help you and how to integrate them organically into your life so that it feels good to you, so that it feels authentic to you. And this becomes your own personalized journey. But that requires that key word consistency. The longer that you wait in between sessions, especially at the beginning, you're going to have such a hard time actually integrating these habits. You're going to sit in therapy for a little bit and then you'll be like, okay, this is great. And then you're going to wait two weeks before you even do this again. You might think about it. You might think, oh yeah, this is something I want to work on, but it's going to be really hard to do because the rest of your life is happening. So if you're able to meet with your therapist weekly, we can keep you accountable for the work that you want to do. And that is something that we view as a very important role in treatment. And when I say ours, I mean exclusively me and my practice because I can't speak for other therapists, but we definitely view our role at talk therapy as partly keeping you accountable for the things that you say you want to work on to support you and to help you build self-compassion and all that other good stuff. But accountability is a key part of it. And so weekly sessions are crucial to that so that we can help you actually build habits. Also remember that your therapy is not happening in a bubble. It's not like you're just doing this treatment and that's it. You have life going on. Things might happen. You might be focusing on your relationship with your parent and something comes up with your partner or with your friends or at work. And now we have to focus on those things. Now everything is connected. So any coping tool or intervention or processing that we do will help you in other relationships as well, but mostly it will be focused on what's going on in the moment. Or maybe you're talking about something that's in the moment in your relationship and then you connect it to your past. And so now we refocus on the past and think about how that relationship has shaped everything else. So things will change focus, your life keeps happening. And that means that it will take longer. Now, I know that that doesn't sound great because usually we come to therapy thinking, I'm over this, I'm tired of this, I wanna feel differently. And then for you to hear, well, you're probably gonna feel like this a little bit longer <laughs> and it's gonna take time and work, right? That probably doesn't feel great, but it is the truth. And once you do it, once you accomplish it at the other end, I promise it's worth it. It does get lighter. It doesn't feel horrible forever, but it does take work and it does take time. And in order to help you get the best out of therapy and really do the work, weekly sessions are crucial. And of course, also remember that this isn't happening in a bubble, but it's also not just new behaviors that you're building. We are understanding the ones that you have now. What are your current patterns? How are they helping you? How are they not? How can we switch them? What's coming up as we're trying to switch them? And then also unlearning old habits and old behaviors. So we're trying to do a lot of work. And if we only have 20 hours to do it, again, remember that's compared to 20 plus years, it'll probably take longer than that. So weekly sessions are crucial and at least six months is also important so that you can get what ideally you might want, long-term healing. So you might be thinking, okay, that's all great. Long-term healing, weekly sessions, accountability. I get it, the assessment process. Sure, I, that sounds amazing. But the whole point for me wanting to do week, a, a session every other week is because I can't afford it. So let's talk about that the money part. I know that it's easy for me to say, prioritize your mental health, it's important, invest in it. But the truth is that we live in systems that don't always facilitate our ability to invest in our mental health, which of course that is a whole rant on its own, <laughs> but um, I get that, I get that reality. And at Talk Therapy and my practice, we really try to help you make this as affordable as possible. I encourage you to look for a therapist that is close to your budget. 
go through those directories. We have a whole resource page on our website if you wanna check it out. I'll leave it down in the description down below if you're looking for a therapist that is more close to your budget. You can always look through some of these directories based on how much you can actually afford per week. And I encourage you to ask yourself that, how much can I invest in my mental health every week? What does that look like every week? Because that is important. And then find a therapist that matches that. If there's someone that you really like, email them and ask them, hey, this is my budget. Is there any way that you can meet it? Because I would really like to work with you. Ask these questions. If you don't ask, you don't know if someone can meet that. Now for us in my practice, we do have a section where we request that you tell us what your budget is. Because one of our goals is to help make therapy more accessible and more affordable. So based on your budget, we try to get at need it if we can, and if not, to try to get as close to it as possible. And then if we really cannot meet your budget, we will also provide you with some resources. So ask, ask a therapist if you really like them, can you meet my budget? Or maybe if their, their uh, fee is cool, maybe a little bit close, like it's like 30 bucks, 50 bucks off of where your budget is at, ask them anyway. Again, ultimately, if they can't meet it, they'll probably be able to refer you to someone who might. So just ask. So that piece is mostly if you're trying to pay out of pocket or for a private practice therapist. But also remember that you can go through your insurance to make it a little bit more affordable or you'll be able to just pay with your copay. And give your health insurance a call and ask them, do I have mental health coverage? How do I go about receiving that and they can connect you to some. Now the downside I know of health insurance is that most uh, therapists who go through insurances are so booked out that it's hard to find one. It's hard to find one to see you weekly. I know, I know, I've heard and it's so frustrating because again, as you know, it's extremely important to me that you see your therapist every week, um, but it is something, right? And again, we were trying to get you to be able to see someone as consistently as possible that meets your budget. And again, we also have some resources for nonprofits or mental health clinics, which work a little bit differently, but some of them will offer you at no cost or very, very low cost. So be sure to check out some of the resources that I will leave down below if it's an issue of money. But again, it doesn't hurt to just ask whoever you're interested in working with to see if they can meet it. I hope today's video was helpful in understanding why weekly sessions are so important. It really is important for your mental health that you and your therapist create a good, safe relationship where your therapist gets to know you, your history, and where you wanna go, and you also get to make those connections and be active in your treatment to where you want to go. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope that it was helpful or that you learned something. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thank you again so much for watching. And remember, as always, I'm cheering for you.